Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 video lectures. Um, we are going to talk a little bit more about hybridization. So when we laughed last, last left each other, um, we were talking about how we can blend orbitals. And so I'm going to really quick fill in this table that's here and then talk more about what is hybridization and how it occurs. So we have discussed electron domains and we have figured out how to determine um, if an atom has a certain number of electron domains. We then related our electron domains to the shape and the electron pair geometry and also the bond angles. So this part of our table, we have seen this already. And so when we then move into how these shapes come about, we had to, as discussed briefly in a previous video, um, have the orbitals used to make those bonds change because just plain S and plain P orbitals weren't going to be able to make these shapes that we know exist because we can measure these bond angles. So that's where hybridization starts to come in. So real quick, let me just write down some letters here that aren't going to really make very much sense as to where they're coming from and then we'll talk about where they're coming from so if you have two electron domains that means you have sp hybridization if you have three electron domains that's sp3 hybridization oh that's wrong sp2 hybridization if you have four electron domains that's sp3 hybridization and then five sp3 and we add a d and 6 sp3 and we add 2 d's so one of the things i want you to take notice of in this list that doesn't really make any sense to you right now is the number of electron domains that we have is equivalent to essentially the exponents that are being that aren't written necessarily but being added right so i, I drew a little one here in red and another little one here in red saying that i have one s and i have one p so that's a total of two orbitals I've got, if I have three electron domains, I've got one S and two P's, so that's a total of three orbitals. So there's a correlation there. Um, as I am an organic chemist, the most common hybridization that I see is sp3 hybridization. So let's go ahead and start with that. So when we start talking about what is hybridization and how are hybrid orbitals formed, we said that hybridization is a mathematical blending of orbitals. And the reason that we can do this is because orbitals are just a probability function. They are a mathematical equation that's, that if you graph it out, shows a distribution of where it is most likely to have an electron live. And so because orbitals at their heart are just math, you can absolutely blend them. And so when we start blending things, you know, I'm an organic chemist, so you know my favorite element is carbon. So let's focus on that atom first. When we look at carbon, and we start to figure out where this blending is coming in. We need to first draw carbon's electron configuration. So carbon has an electron configuration that ends in 2p2. So if we go ahead and we draw that in, the 1s is full, the 2s is full, and we got one electron in the first 2p and one electron in the second of the 2p's. So when we start talking about blending, it's important to distinguish between the types of electrons we have. These electrons in our 1s orbital, these are core electrons. Core electrons are not involved in bonding. Then if we look at the electrons in this section, these would be considered our valence electrons, and valence electrons are involved in bonding.
So one of the things that uh, is important to chemists, but maybe really not to students, is when we start discussing the blending of these orbitals, um, chemists will first tell you that uh, we're not starting from a ground state electron configuration. We're starting from an excited state electron configuration where this electron that I'm circling here in the 2s has popped up to the 2p. So if you want to um, draw that, you're welcome to. And it would just have all of these orbitals half filled. And I'm not even going to redraw the core electrons because they do not matter. Um, but you can if you want to. And so what happens in our mathematical blending of orbitals is if we have four electron domains, like carbon typically does, we need to blend four orbitals. So we take four orbitals and we blend them together. And in this case, we would blend all four of the orbitals that I'm boxing. So the S and all three of the P's. So when I blend these together, now what happens is the one S is still present, but no one cares about it because it's not involved in bonding. And instead what we have is now these blended orbitals. And if we put four orbitals into our mathematical blender, we get four orbitals out. Notice how these orbitals are equivalent in energy. So they're the same energy with respect to one another. You don't know this yet, but they're going to be the same size and they're the same shape. These are three really important characteristics because these things describe um, what we see in real life. Because what we see in real life for something like carbon when it has four electron domains is we see a tetrahedral structure where all the bonds between carbon and its attached atoms are the same um, size, meaning they're the same length and they're the same energy. And so uh, the only way to do that is to start with orbitals that are the same size and the same shape and the same energy. So these criteria give rise to the shapes that we know occur. Oh no. Oh, okay, good. Hmm. Does a cur have two C's? Yeah, you'll tell me in class. Okay, so one last idea that I'm going to try and squeeze in over here. Um, when we talk about blending, remember that S orbitals are spherical in shape and P orbitals are dumbbell shaped. And so if we're um, creating an sp3 hybrid orbital, we need one of our uh, spheres, which is our S, and three of our P's. And so when we blend these together, what we end up with is four orbitals that have maybe this kind of general shape. They still have a little bit of a P characteristic because they have the double lobes, right? So they got two lobes here, but they also have some S characteristic because this side is bigger and more spherical than the other side and you get four of these out right because you put four orbitals in you had one of the s's and three of the p's and when you put four in you get four out so let's also look at sp2 hybrid orbitals so in sp2 hybrid orbitals again what we're seeing is a mathematical blending and in this blending if we again um, look at something that has maybe a 1s a 2s and a 2p and this time i won't give you a specific example um, because all kinds of things can have an sp2 hybrid orbital um, and so we still have 
the 1s being core in this example, and our core electrons are no bonding. Right, so they're just sitting at the center. They are not involved in bonding. And then we, when we make sp2 hybrid orbitals, we're taking the s and now only two of the p's and we're blending those and when we blend them remember the one s is still down here but no one cares about it because it's not involved in bonding and what we end up with are now three sp2 orbitals that are equivalent in size shape and energy and you might think about this p orbital that we didn't use and wonder where it went. Well, if it wasn't used during blending, it's just still present. It's just used for um, something else later on that we're going to get to. So if we look at um, this example, again, notice our sp2 hybrid orbitals, right? Same size same shape and same energy so um, when we start to um, consider maybe what hybridization looks like for sp2 we're going to take one of the spheres right so one s orbital and two of the p orbitals well that's pretty awful look oh goodness let's redraw that and make that look more dumbbell shaped and so when we blend these together now it your resulting orbital your sp2 hybrid orbital is gonna be kind of more stout and more spherical because if you look at like proportionally right it's essentially two-thirds of a p orbital right and one-third of an s orbital and previously if we just scooch for a moment up here this was three quarters of a p orbital and one quarter of an s orbital so this one the sp3 had 25% s character, 75% p character, meaning that it's much more like a p orbital shape. Whereas if we change to sp2 hybrid orbitals, we get something that's um, more like a uh, s orbital shape than the previous type of hybrid. I didn't set a timer. Oh, how long have I been talking? I'm gonna have to edit this part out. I'm just going to keep going. So if we look at the question at the bottom of this page, it says, how do you know what the hybridization is in this molecule? So here's a molecule for you, and you look at it, and you say, well, goodness, I don't know how to tell the hybridization. So first, we find the central atom. We find the electrons domains attached to that central atom. Right, so there are three electron domains. When there's three electron domains, that means you need three orbitals. And so you take an S, a P, and a P. You blend to get SP2 hybrid orbital. And so um, if you kind of, you know, take a moment to look back at page two of your notes that had that chart on it, you'll see that uh, the three electron domains matches the trigonal planar electron pair geometry, the 120 degree bond angle, and the sp2 hybridization. So let's go ahead and stop there, and we will pick up in another video the remainder of the note packet, which is going to talk more about what we do with this sad, lonely p-orbital that's left over.
Thanks for your attention and good night. Tony signing out. Supposed to have escape.